And joining us now, Sarah Diamond. She is the president of the Ontario College of Art and Design, which for 135 years anyway, has not been a university and is about to become one. And that's where I want to start. First of all, welcome here. Thank you. You're about to get university added to the end of all that. What difference does a word make? OCAD has been in the university sector from 2002, so it's eight years. We've had a lot of time to practice. To actually enter the sector, we had to be checked out by uh, the Ontario government to see whether we were credible, whether our courses had already met university standards, and then we had to apply to AUCC, our national organization, of which we are a very active member. So the name university, OCAD University, will, in a sense, complete a process that has taken at least 10 years to um, arrive at this point. Is that mostly marketing? No, it's not just no. marketing. It's, uh, but marketing is valuable because you want to make sure that the students coming to the institution really understand that it's a university environment. And by that I mean it is practice-based learning. You know, they're, they're very much engaged in studio art and design courses. There's also quite a significant academic load, and that has increased over the years. And they leave with an honors degree, so it's actually a bachelor's that has an honors designation. That's the question people are going to ask. You know, you're, you, you've been the Ontario College of Art originally, then Art and Design, but are you really a university the way University of Toronto or McGill or UBC are, uni are you know, widely acknowledged as universities? Well, we hope that in terms of art and design learning at OCAD and some of the academic streams were better than those comprehensive universities. <laughs> you know, we've had an opportunity to really um, create great expertise in the way we teach. We have excellent scores from our students in terms of the level of engagement, the quality of experience with their faculty, and the academic environment is rigorous. You know, they're reading philosophy, history, business, they learn mathematics. Science. So they actually receive a comprehensive education that I think, unfortunately, many students in the comprehensives don't have anymore. Well, here's what Noah Richler wrote a couple of years about what you're doing at OCAD. I'm sure you've seen this quote before, and then I'll ask you a question coming out of it. In her inaugural address to the school, the school's new director made it quite clear she had a plan, and that Richard Florida's ideas about deep clustering and the advantages her school might bring to the creative economy were among her guiding lights. She has had big ambitions for OCAD from the start. Clustering, of course, being this sort of concentration of talented people um, mm -hmm. in cities and regions and so on. Okay, uh, a few years later, or how long have you been there now? You've been there five, five years? Five years, and I was just renewed. Okay, so you re renewed for another five. Indeed. Congratulations. What do you think you've achieved in five years? I think OCAD has um, done very well in the last five years. We have um, not only strengthened the relationships between art and design education inside the institution. So big goal of mine was to make sure it was interdisciplinary within its own context. We've also, I think, um, adopted a philosophy that says art and design knowledge, that set of lenses that artists and designers bring, is of great value to other disciplines and to fundamental problem solving in the world. So we have a strategic plan that connects art and design with science, engineering, medical research, um, diversity, solving issues of diversity. We have an incredible Aboriginal program. And we believe that artists and designers should be not only expert users of technologies, but inventors of technologies. And we have a digital futures initiative that's just world class. OK, follow up on that, because give, give me an example of how art and design, if somebody graduates from your institution with art and design, how that is relevant to healthcare or Aboriginal affairs or all the other things you just mentioned? Well, let's talk about healthcare because I think that's really an incredibly important field. So, so designers um, have been underused in um, looking at the kind of challenges of, for example, the, the hospital environment, which is sort of the last port of care. Mm -hmm. What that environment should be, its kind of human qualities, even how technologies can be used safely there, how um, nursing staff and doctors use things from cell phones, for example, um, right through to the actual um, health technologies that patients experience. Well, designers are now integrating into redesigning that environment to make it more effective, safer, much more um, positive for humans in that environment. And then you start to bring that out to an aging population and the ways that we need to completely rethink the healthcare system, its delivery, what the home needs to be, um, e-health, which I know has had some challenges in Ontario. Challenges, you think? 
<laughs> okay. But put designers yeah. in there, and, and designers are now not only interested in objects, your water glass, which is designed, I mean, everything's designed, but they're also very engaged in systems design and systems thinking. So that's a great example. And for example, OCAD's part of Mars Innovation, and we're looking at how, in fact, to help the emerging industries in this space be more competitive. This is, you know, for people who've lived in Toronto for a long time, and when they think OCAD, they think, Okay, you're, you're graduating thousands of new artists and sculptors every year and that kind of thing. I mean, which you do, but you're obviously more than that, yes. right? And, and this may be a, um, this is a new thing, I guess, maybe a new message that people need to understand about this place? It's a new message, and I think what it does is it locates um, OCAD uh, in the same class as the best of breed, in a sense, with schools like ourselves in other parts of the world. So the Royal College of Art uh, in, um, in London is a fantastic university environment. The um, University of the Arts London, very similar. And they all have PhD programs as well as undergraduate programs. They work very closely with engineering schools. Um, OCAD is deeply immersed in the digital industries in Ontario and nationally. You know, we have um, an accelerator incubator environment that works with mobile companies from, you know, the rims of the world right through to people making applications for your smartphones. Um, and uh, we help those folks actually find markets and use the university and college environment because we have about 12 academic partners to look at how they can better um, commercialize their products and also better undertake research. So we have a different model also for research that I think is really valuable. Let me offer an analogy. This may not be a perfect one, but you know, it took a while for people to stop thinking of the then Ryerson Polytechnic Institute as Rye High and start thinking of it as a you know, big university that makes big contributions to downtown Toronto and beyond. Uh, how will you know whether people stop thinking of OCAD as this place that pumps out sculptors and artists and more along the lines of what you've just described? Well, I want them to think about us in both ways. I want them to know that we have just an absolutely extravagantly brilliant visual art faculty and our, our graduate shows on right now and the evidence is there on the walls and on the floors and it's just great and we need to keep doing that because you need to have that experimental amazing visual work to inspire the more maybe business oriented and, and research based that you're creating. So I want people to think about OCAD University as the place that has the best artists and the best designers in Canada, some of the best in the world and also is the go-to place to take design thinking and art uh, kind of experimental courage into other areas that really need to transform the world. I know everybody is concerned these days about universities that do research that they are able to commercialize that research. Yeah. Now it may come as news to people that you do research, you're a research-based institution, but how are you commercializing that research? Uh, well, we have a somewhat different approach maybe to, again, the traditional universities because we are a place that industries come to already in order to bring research problems. And so we bring um, some of their questions into our classrooms. We're very good at doing that. We also have, um, as I mentioned, incubator and collaborative environments with companies where we can put researchers together with corporate researchers. We're trying to push the private sector to do their own research by building out those relationships. Um, and then we also are involved, as I mentioned, with Mars Innovation and um, with a number of major projects that have commercialization as um, a real potential outcome. We just won a major grant from the province with York University to create a center in um, information visualization and data-driven design. We're providing the designers and the artists and all of the kind of um, social science ethnographic research to work with um, science, to work with medicine, to work with um, actually the publishing industry, and looking at the next applications in visualization, which is a really important field. Many commercial um, possibilities. And we have the companies actually like OpenText and IBM and the Globe and Mail, to name a few, as partners mm -hmm. with us and that grant. Where would that go? Where will that physically yeah, go? Physically be, yeah. Well, we've just um, bought three buildings in the last two years um, on Richmond West. So we're actually creating a kind of south campus. And um, we've been building research labs there with support from the Ontario government. And we've been very successful recently in Canada Foundation for Innovation Grants. So we are playing with, you know, with the other universities in, in the same space in many ways. But um, we have no desire to become a comprehensive university. What I believe in is specialization, and I wish there was more of it in Ontario in the system and better ability to partner. Tell me how big an issue this is for you, because one of the things that Ryerson wanted to do 
Sorry to keep coming back to Ryerson, but you know. They're, well, they're our friends. We work well with them. Very it's good. Okay. I'm, I'm glad to hear you're getting we along so well. <laughs> One of the things they wanted to do was not only provide a good education for people, but they wanted to transform downtown Toronto. And they've done so in so many different ways, including most recently taking over you know, Maple Leaf Gardens, the old building there. You've got this building that is really quite distinctive looking. Yes. But I wonder if part of what you're after as well is to kind of transform the look of the part of the city that you're in. Is that, is that part of what you're about? I admire what Ryerson has done. I think Sheldon is an incredible city builder. Sheldon Levy, the president. Sheldon Levy, the president, is an, an amazing city builder. And, you know, I think that OCAD has played a bit of that role in the past. We, we really were the 70s and 80s revolution along Queen Street that made it the cultural district it is. And so by moving further south, and now we're beginning to plan moving west because we need more space. We are growing and we're underserved in terms of space. We're hoping that we continue to bring the kind of art and design district capacity and also the innovation district um, capacity further west in Toronto. And we always um, either build beautiful buildings, even the small ones we've built in the last 10 years are stunning. There's a number of smaller buildings. Or we buy um, great historic real estate and we bring it up to scale. We really transform the interior so that it serves the city really well. And the other thing that we've done, again, art and design school, is we create wonderful exhibition spaces. So uh, we see part of our mandate as being, you know, a piece of the cultural sector, providing more opportunities for people in the city to have experiences in really great buildings. Do you think the people of the city know that about you? I hope that people in Toronto um, can learn more about OCAD and the role that we're playing now in the city. We're, we're really engaged. We're a, a network hub in many ways. And um, I'm not sure that people do know how activist we are and how connected we are. Let, uh, you're going to forgive this. Um, you're going to forgive this question. It's not me talking, but this is. You know that whenever the, people like you do these kinds of interviews, there are people who will watch and they will say, you know, all this talk of application and design and interdisciplinary and all of that business and touch, you know, being associated with the creative economy, it's a fad. How would you convince people that? what you're about is more than just sort of the buzzword for the year 2010 and that this is something that we're actually still going to be engaged in 25 and 50 years down the road. Well, I don't think design is a fad. In design is um, fundamental to the production of intellectual property. And uh, one of the things that Canada needs to be able to do in every sector, from manufacturing right through to the incredibly aggressive digital world, is to produce intellectual property. And we live in a design-driven world. I think we have since the post-war era with the growth of you know, consumer um, commodities. It's even more true now when almost everything Every new purchase is design driven. And if you look at the big revolutions in technology from you know, the iPhone through to the internet, um, they are design driven. And it is design that makes a product successful or an experience successful. So I don't think it's a fad. I think we've, in fact, begun to recognize what's been an underlying reality. If you read uh, Roger Martin's um, thinking these days, you know, he talks about the importance of business engaging with design. Industry Canada just published a major report about how Canadian businesses need to align their capacity with design. And in terms of art and its role in society, uh, art is enduring. You know, it's one of those um, intrinsic experiences and values that we hold dear to us. And I think what we've seen in the last decades is that art endures whatever the circumstances. In which case, let me ask you one last question on that, because OCAD, even back when it was just Ontario College of Art, has a very long tradition of, a proud tradition, as being a premier arts incubator, if you like. I mean, the Group of Seven, I think, has some history with the Ontario College of Art. It, are the days of having a place that focuses solely on creating great artists, period, full stop, are those days over? There's certainly a role for some institutions to focus on creating great artists, no question. That's no longer OCAD's identity. I mean, those days are over. We have a school of about 4,000 undergraduate students, so just to give a sense of scale. And um, half of them are in the art faculty, half of them are in design. I would say the artists and designers increasingly are speaking and working with each other. So that's a great opportunity in the world that's happening, and OCAD has created that environment. We're going to continue to produce wonderful artists and wonderful designers, and 
also our alumni are in every walk of life. It's, it is as though an undergraduate degree at OCAD is a ticket to success in the business community, frankly to politics, you know, it really into the sciences and engineering these days and into the world of medical research um, and medical practice. So um, we're, we're an incubator for intelligence, imagination. We call ourselves the University of the Imagination. And I think it's because we equip students with the kinds of skills, both creative and analytic, that can take them almost anywhere that they want to go. Gotcha. President Diamond, thanks for visiting us at TVO tonight. Thank you very much.